He said, They'll never tell you this, but really, it's not the video. It's not the television. It's the audio. It is the spoken word. It's what you hear. It is the sound that sells. Indeed, it's the sound that sells. Well, we're in the sound business. My name is Stan Houston. This is uh, What It Takes Radio from the Christian Entrepreneur Network. And our online flagship program is called The Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. And today we're going to learn about sound and we're going to learn about Sully. The man who put the plane in the river. Doesn't sound like a very good idea, but that story is uh, one of the heroic ones here in America. And you know what? As Christian entrepreneurs, we can learn something about sound, and we can learn some things about Sully. And that's what we're going to do right now. And indeed, we do welcome you. My name is Stan Houston, and I'm a business performance coach. I'm the executive director, whatever that is, but I guess that makes me the leader of a new and going and growing organization called the Christian Entrepreneur Network. And this is a radio program, an internet on-demand radio program, which we call the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. And all of those three words, we follow Jesus. We believe he was an entrepreneur just like you and me, and we're here not just to uh, hear something or to learn something, but to experience something so that we can be the kind of person who's fully alive as we seek God's special wisdom, his insight, his strength, and his direction so that we can indeed uh, build a life and business that matters and makes a difference. And we'd like to help you do just that. Well, a few things came together in the midst of this busy week. First of all, in America, for those of you who are hearing other places, you probably even know this, this is the week of the great, great American football game. American football, and it's called the Super Bowl. It is kind of the the big, big championship game of the professional teams. And uh, it is quite an event. But, of course, what has happened is it's become more than a football game. It's a, certainly a carnival of commerce. And on the uh, television broadcast that goes around the world to hundreds of millions of people, uh, right now uh, companies are getting the final touches on their commercial. They are spending literally... Uh, many millions of dollars to have a 30-second commercial or a 60-second commercial that will be seen by the people who are watching the game. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that through the week. I'm going to be giving you a little coaching about radio and how you perhaps should begin to do radio or video to uh, sell your business. What if you had the opportunity, your business, even your little entrepreneurial business, what if someone made it possible for you to actually have a one-minute commercial on the Super Bowl? 130, 150 million people may be watching, listening, seeing, at least wandering around as the uh, program is on. And you have one minute to uh, tell your story, make your mark, and uh, hopefully close a deal. What would you say? What would you do? What would your program be like? And oftentimes I've told businesses that they should stop doing strategic planning because that's a waste of time. And I really mean that. But that's another lesson. I say if you want to start thinking about your life in business... Think about how you and your colleagues would put together a 60-second commercial about you and your business. 
Who are you? What do you do? And what can people feel, experience, and do if they would work, buy, or enjoy the experience with you? What would that be like? Well, I'm going to challenge you to do a little bit of thought about that this week. As I was uh, making my way around today, one of the uh, classic American broadcasters was talking about some of these commercials, and he pointed out that uh, some of the things they're now doing are not relying so much on the picture, but it's the sound. Now, this is a guy who's made a lot of money in radio, and he's also been on uh, television and video, but he, like me, loves radio best of all. And then he simply said in his uh, voice, they'll never tell you this very much, but we all know it's true. Yes, the pictures count, but it's the voice. It is the sound. It is the audio. It's what people hear that makes the sale. It's what people hear that makes the sale. And then someone followed up by saying, and nobody ever buys anything because they read something. They buy because someone said something. Well, what do you think of that? I'm just going to let that kind of sit on your head for a while. As we move along this week, think about that. Okay, here we are. It's Tuesday night, going into Wednesday. You've got some leadership responsibilities. What would you do in one minute to tell your story? Uh, to tell people what you do, to uh, let them know what kind of deal, what they would feel, experience, and do if they would take a chance on buying and working with you. We can help you do that. In fact, we do that a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of experience as a radio broadcaster, many years as a business performance coach, and I work with people like you all around the world to actually tell their one-minute message, their two-minute message, their three-minute message. Right now, we're putting together a variety of those one-minute messages on video and on audio for companies all over the world. And we could do that for you. And nothing would please us more than for those of you who are followers, as we are, of Jesus the Master Entrepreneur, to have a powerful program of persuasion that is God-honoring in its attractiveness, in its uh, ethics, in the way it presents itself that uh, is good and wholesome and pure and effective and powerful and maybe even so effective and so good that Jesus himself would smile at the work you do. You can reach me at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. And uh, we hang out at tcenglobal.org, tcenglobal.org. And if you'd like to kind of help me out, I'd be grateful, tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. Contribute now. Let's see if we can do some sounding. Well, one of the things that we do is we obviously go into life and business and find some things that might help us make a difference. And there's a guy who always challenges me. He means well, but he said, Stan, uh, you have a lot of good information, but make sure that you are always telling entrepreneurs uh, how they can grow their business. Well, how can they grow their business? Well, a couple things I think might be helpful that I read today. Uh, someone wrote a little podcast. She's writing and now doing an internet radio program, and she calls it The One Minute Message. <laughs> and we just got through talking about One Minute Message, but she has a different frame on it. She said, think about the things that you could do 
that would only take one minute. Okay, right now, is there something you could do in your office around your space that would only take one minute? Do it. Do it. It's a way to reduce clutter. You will be surprised how much work you will get done if you just say, I could do that in one minute, and instead of putting it off, you do it. I could make that phone call in one minute. Uh, I could have a conversation with my friend in Sioux Falls, and it would only take one minute, and it could be very helpful. What can you do that would only take one minute? And if you see that, if that's around you now, just do it. One minute. But uh, there's another thing that goes along with this. The uh, gentleman by the name of a uh, Chesley Burnett, Sullenberger the third. <laughs> Chesley Burnett Sullenberger the uh, third was born in Denison, Texas, on January twenty fifth, nineteen fifty one. And so last weekend, now you know why he prefers to be called Sully. Sully uh, celebrated his birthday. Sully, the hero of the plain in the Hudson River. And uh, one of my friends passed this on to me, and I thought it was so appropriate for entrepreneurship. Again, my friend challenges me, says, help a uh, entrepreneur to grow their business. Here's a little story that came out, passed on to me, from a, a law journal of all things. <laughs> As a boy, Sullenberger contracted the aviation bug by watching the fighter jet sorties flown from nearby Perrin Air Force Base. And following his graduation with honors from Denison High, in 1973 he won the Outstanding Cadet in Airmanship Award as the top flyer in his class. His Air Force career next took him to Purdue University for graduate work, then to flight training in Missouri and Arizona, and finally to the 493rd Tactical Fighter Squadron stationed at Lakenheath, UK. Sullenberger's career as a commercial pilot began in uh, 1980 and continued more or less uneventfully for 28 plus years until January the 15th, 2009. Ten years ago. On that afternoon, Sullenberger was piloting a U.S. Airways Airbus A320 heading from LaGuardia Airport in New York City to Charlotte, North Carolina. Shortly after takeoff, the plane ran into a flock of Canadian geese at 2,800 feet, sucking a number of them through the aircraft's two main turbine engines. And of course, you know the rest. In very short order, Sullenberger determined that the disabled aircraft couldn't turn and make it back to LaGuardia, and neither could he divert to Teterboro Airport across the river in New Jersey. So he executed a near-perfect water landing instead, ditching a commercial airliner in the Hudson River and saving the lives of all 155 people on board. The hosannas that followed place Sullenberger on a short list of legendary American flyers with the likes of Lindbergh, Earhart, and John Glenn. Yet, he emerged from the whole ordeal as modest and unassuming as before, granting his first in-depth interview to his daughter's high school newspaper. And he remained that way in the face of countless awards and honorary degrees, the naming of children and dogs in his honor, and even his eventual Tom Hanksification in Clint Eastwood's 2018-2016 movie, Sully. Now, here's the lesson. One way of looking at this, he said later, might be that for 42 years I've been making small, regular deposits in the bank of experience, education, and training. 
and on January 15th, the balance was sufficient so that I could make a very large withdrawal. Sullenberger, who just turned 68, retired in 2010, and uh, literally uh, he has become a, a celebrity, but not the celebrity who goes out and makes the big deal about himself as he's attempted to be what he always was, someone who loves to pilot an airplane, but someone who just simply wants to serve others. And that's what he's been doing. But I thought about that. Making small deposits every day. Every day you make a small deposit in the bank of experience, training, education, relationships. Every day you make a deposit. You do something positive and powerful, but small and good. And then that day may come in which you have to make a large withdrawal. And it may be the only way you can do that is because many years and many days <laughs> and many ways before you've been making small deposits. Right now, the key word for entrepreneurship is resilience. It is the ability to take adversity, difficult times, tough times, and continue to, in the words of St. Paul the Entrepreneur, keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. And someday, some way, you'll be called from time to time to make some significant withdrawals for life and business and relationships for your good, the common good, and perhaps for the glory of God. And the only way you'll be able to do that is that you made some significant deposits along the way. Along with that, uh, my friend uh, David, who uh, David does a, uh, he was a radio and television performer for many years, and is now a voice performer. He's one who knows the power of the spoken words. I just simply will call him David Corvo. <laughs> David Corviasse. And he says this, uh, what I do every day is to make sure that in all the things I do, I also take time to say thank you. How many times can I say thank you to someone, anyone, every day? You know what happens when you do that, to say thank you. And as I said just a few weeks ago, to say I'm grateful. Thank you. I am grateful. Today, uh, <laughs> a car problem. But the man who helped me, I just said thank you. I am grateful. And the big smile came upon his face. My pleasure, Mr. Houston. Thankful and grateful for you. If you want to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to learn the art of making many, many, many small deposits. Just let that sit on your head as you uh, continue on to the week that will be for you. Hopefully this 20 minutes of sound, a little teaching, training, hopefully it's an experience of some energy, some education. Maybe it's just a small deposit that will help you get through your day, uh, help you do something that will be significant in building your life and your business. My name is Stan Houston, and you can reach out to me at RadioEdge77 at gmail.com, RadioEdge77 at gmail.com. 
I would be grateful for a tcenglobal.org slash contribute now. The Christian Entrepreneur Network, we would love to have your support. We'd love to have your affiliation. We'd love for you to be a part of the growing network of people who know that much of the world economy and much of the well-being of people is dependent upon the man or woman who starts a business, creates an enterprise, and brings it to creation. They build a life. They build a business. They make it happen. We'd like to help you do just that. So again, reach out to us, tcenglobal.org, radioedge77 at gmail.com. I know that we can help you. Best in blessings, and bye for now. Music